All right, uh, thank you. Um, I will keep my comments relatively brief. Um, I'm going to make my comments um, by putting on my, my hat as a clinician uh, and as the director of a large uh, multi-hospital quality improvement uh, collaborative uh, across the state of Michigan. I think my comments are directed to the implementation scientists uh, and to those uh, working on the science uh, of this, this field. Uh, we are or an organization um, that, as uh, Jeremy alluded to, is very interested in solving problems um, as opposed to spending uh, a significant amount of time talking about uh, about the theory. Uh, I would also say our work uh, and our group is a receptor site, um, as, as Jeremy also referred to, for dissemination and implementation. Um, let me describe a little bit uh, what, what we do. Um, I direct um, the Hospital Medicine Safety Consortium. Uh, this is a large uh, multi-hospital uh, quality improvement collaborative uh, called a CQI, Collaborative Quality Initiative. Uh, we have funding from a pair, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan and the Blue Care Network. Uh, and our job uh, is to help hospitals around the country improve in a particular area. Um, we are focusing on medical patients and we are focusing on reducing adverse events in hospitalized medical patients. Uh, we have partnered with about 40 hospitals around the state of Michigan. And one of the key things we do is create a data registry, uh, which allows for uh, meaningful measurement of how hospitals are performing and valid comparisons uh, between hospitals. Um, our goal ultimately uh, is to share experiences, uh, share practices, learn from the good performers, um, and as uh, Professor Yates said earlier, uh, study some of the crashes, if you will. Uh, there are a lot of bad performers, um, or I guess it's, it's more appropriate to say uh, they're not great performers, uh, and uh, multiple opportunities for improvement. Um, and understanding what's going on in those institutions and, and trying to help them improve is important to, to what we're doing. Um, that is essentially um, what, what our project is. Uh, I mentioned focusing on adverse events, and we're focusing on uh, preventing hospital-associated venous thromboembolism. Uh, that's the, our target area. Uh, and so as you think about that quality improvement uh, initiative, uh, it actually seems fairly straightforward uh, and fairly easy to carry out. Um, and in fact, if you look at our performance uh, and the performance of all the hospitals over the last year, we've actually seen about a relative 20% improvement in rates of appropriate prophylaxis in hospitals across the state of Michigan. I happen to think that largely relates to a bit of a, a Hawthorne effect. Uh, we are measuring data, we are looking, we are talking about the problem, and it's probably not so surprising uh, that some of the hospitals begin to improve. But uh, we face some real challenges, uh, and we are, uh, in my opinion, very often flying in the dark, um, and we need the help of the implementation scientists and the implementation science field. Um, we deal with a lot of the improvement strategies uh, that, that Dr. Grimshaw uh, referred to this morning. Um, we focus on uh, educational meetings. Uh, we do that. He mentioned that the EPIC uh, group has uh, multiple systematic reviews showing the effectiveness uh, of, of educational meetings. Uh, we focus on audit and feedback. Um, we utilize financial incentives, a lot of what's been out there. Um, what we don't know is which of those work uh, and in, wit in what settings. Uh, that's a big problem for us. Um, how do we adapt a lot of these different tools to the different settings and to different conditions? Um, in contrast to uh, you've seen, when you've seen one, you've seen them all. What we like to say is when you've seen one hospital, you've seen one hospital. Um, every single one is different. Uh, we lack, I think, a lot of the science and the guidance to, to tell us how to tailor these things to individual sites uh, and circumstances. Um, the condition um, is important as well. Uh, we've referred to multiple studies in audit and feedback. Uh, my question is, is an, is an audit and feedback uh, study that shows the effectiveness in improving glycemic control in diabe diabetes patients, is that relevant to improving VTE prophylaxis? How does it have to be adapted in a way to make it meaningful for a particular condition that hospitals around the state are interested in, uh, in tackling? I think those are some, some issues that, that we really need to, to get some direction on. Um, I want to reflect on the comment that, uh, that, that Dr. Grimshaw also said, uh, that there's a huge opportunity cost to a lot of this. Um, we, for example, with VTE prophylaxis, uh, we know from a few studies uh, that standing orders improve rates of VTE prophylaxis. So we may go to a hospital and say you need to implement standing orders. Um, we may not be sure whether it's going to work in that given institution if they lack, say, a physician champion to lead their particular cause. Uh, and uh, there's a huge cost to some of these hospitals in putting these things into place. Um, and we squander a lot of goodwill, opportunity costs, and resources uh, if 
we make a mistake as we do this. And I think the implementation science lacks a little bit in helping to guide us. Uh, in fact, I was at a uh, hospital in northern Michigan, uh, Alpena Regional Medical Center recently, a very high-performing hospital, and made the mistake of saying uh, that, that trying to improve prophylaxis was not costly. Uh, and I had a physician in the audience say, you have to be kidding me. Uh, there are six people in this room that have been specifically hired to help this institution begin to implement the types of things you're talking about and trying to improve. Uh, and so that really causes you to reflect and say, wow, you know, when I say this is going to work for your institution, they may act on that. And we better be sure that in their setting, we know everything we need to know to tell them how to do it and, and is it going to improve. Um, I happen to think uh, what, what the field needs to help us develop is a bit of a needs assessment. And I'm thinking at the organizational level. Um, it may not be as simple as a checklist, but can you go to a hospital and ask them about operational, organizational, financial characteristics? Uh, and before you engage in a quality improvement project in this particular area, can they give us some information that allows us to say, hey, you know what, don't waste your time starting in this element right here. You first need to get some of these basics into place. I think we lack that uh, and we need that. And my hope is that uh, implementation scientists can, can help us develop that. Um, much of the science, there's been a lot of talk about randomized controlled trials. Some of our challenge is when you look at some of the science of improvement and look at some of the studies uh, that look at the various interventions we're trying to adapt, uh, we have a couple of challenges. Um, one is that very often some of these studies are carried out in a way uh, that, that produces methodologic rigor. It's appealing to people uh, funding projects. It's appealing to journal editors. But it's very hard to look at a method section of that paper or that study or that process and disentangle that and bring that out into the real world. Uh, that's a big, a big challenge for us, and I think we need, uh, we need help doing that. Um, you, perhaps tools on how we scale this to, to multiple settings, uh, bring it up a bit. A randomized trial tells you that something works in that particular setting with those particular conditions. Um, we have the variability that exists in our collaborative and across all our hospitals. How do you bring it out to that level? I think that's, that's something we, can, uh, we need. Um, we need more work on some of the barriers to improvement that exist. Lots of people talk about facilitators. Studies that tend to get published are ones where things have worked. We need more information on what doesn't work. Uh, and when someone does run up against a barrier, has anyone been able to figure out how to get around that? That would be incredibly useful for practicing physicians and hospitals around the state. And I think the science in that field uh, is, is woefully inadequate. And I'll conclude my final thoughts with, uh, we are exactly the type of, of network that I think implementation scientists should be partnering with uh, to advance both of our issues and agendas. Uh, wouldn't it be great as we're out there working with 40 different hospitals with robust data collection to have several implementation science projects running in parallel within this collaborative helping us learn what we're doing that is working, what's not working uh, in a real world setting uh, that would be very generalizable. We're doing it in 40 very distinct institutions and what we would learn in that environment would be far more relevant than a highly rigorous randomized controlled trial in a very limited number of institutions or a limited setting. Um, that's the call I have to the implementation science field uh, to work with organizations like this one to further advance both of our, uh, our agendas. Uh, and at that, um, I'll sort of leave my comments and turn it over to Ann.